stand at the corner of Dulcimer Street and you can see down the whole length of the terrace. And fine houses they are too. Those on the right date from 1839, when the neighborhood was quite exclusive. But since then, they've come down in the world a bit. You know, apartment to let, furnished room for single gent, like number 10, for instance. Let's start with the ground floor, where Mr. Josser lived. After all, it's as much his story as anybody's. It's the morning of Christmas Eve, 1938. A very important date for Mr. Josser, and he's got a lot on his mind. Mr. Battleberry, sir, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted you to know how I don't know how to thank you for all your great kindness during my illness. 42 years I've been with you, and that's a long time. I well remember, I well remember, I, oh, for goodness, Mr. Battleberry, sir. While Mr. Josser is preparing for his ordeal, let's take a look at the neighbors overhead. Upstairs on the first floor, there's Mrs. Boone and her only son, Percy. Did you plug him? Sure, I plugged him. Did you get the dough? Sure, I got the dough. Okay. On the top floor, there's Connie Coke a little lady of uncertain age and irregular habits. Mm-mm, not back yet. She's a night bird, Connie is. Out with the cat and home with the milk. Merry Christmas. You owe me two weeks' rent. Two weeks? Really? Fancy that. <laughs> I must pay you then, mustn't I? If you please. So I shall directly after Christmas. Uh, if you can't now, I must ask for your room. You mean you want me to hop? You can't really expect me to keep tenants who don't pay. An empty top floor back pays sweet Fanny Adams. It won't be empty long. That's what you always say about your old back basement. My lower ground floor is nothing to do with the case. All right. I'm only trying to save you from yourself before the rot sets in. <laughs> I don't expect any thanks. After all, it's your funeral. Well, you can have till next Saturday. That's my last word. Oh, thanks, ducks. Toodaloo. Everything? I think so. Come on, Doris, do. Now, don't go making that speech too long. Let me make a speech, huh? That's what you were doing in your sleep all night. Uh, well, goodbye. Bye bye, Fred. So long, Mum. Don't say anything silly. No, no, I won't. Morning. Good morning, Doris. Oh, hello, Percy. Good morning, Mr. Josser. Percy, say good morning, Dad. Oh, hello, Percy. I'll be glad when I get today over. See you tonight, Doris. Good luck, Dad. It's Dad's last day at Battlebury's. Oh. It'll uh, make a change. What? Well, I mean, it'll be a nice change for your dad. Yes, it will, won't it? That's right. Doris, I... You I go wanna... that way, don't you? That's right. Doris, I, uh... There's a good picture on your story tonight. Is there? Yes, and I, I wonder if maybe you'd like to come see it. Oh, well, I'd love to, but it's Christmas Eve and there's all my shopping, you know. Thanks all the same. Oh, OK. Girl in blue, little girl in blue. I'm in love. That's 
that's what it is. The real thing this time. Oh, you're the girl for me, Doris. If I had a girl like you, I'd be okay. You on your side, me on mine. We could walk a bit, talk a bit after me. Good morning, Percy. Yes, it's me. Oh, hello, Manna. Quite a stranger, aren't I? Yeah, I've, um, I've been meaning to drop over and see you. That's a lie for a start. No, it's not. I've been busy. I couldn't care less. I only came because Jimmy sent me over. Oh, what's he want? Don't know. Think he'd have something better to do. Shall I tell him you're coming? Okay. Hello, Percy. Hello, Jerry. Meet Percy Boone, Mr. Rufus. Pleased to meet you, Percy. Well, right, Mr. Rufus has a spot of business he can put in your way. You can take a car to bits with one hand tied behind his back, couldn't you, Percy boy? Well, I don't know about that. What's the trouble? Just a car I want doing up a bit? You could take it round to your place, see? With him, there's no guarantee they'd put you on it. No. <laughs> Where you got it? It's in a lockup round the back. When are you through? About 5.30. Meet you outside the back entrance. OK. Fine. You know, you want to make an honest living, this thing's fixed. It ain't fixed. It's just made difficult. <laughs> See you later then, Percy. All right, mate. He's a lad, he is. Don't forget I mentioned your name. Ah, oh, thanks, pal. We do appreciate the favour you've been doing us, Mr. Byrne. What? Coming over to breathe the same air as us. Well, I told you I've been busy, didn't I? Of course. And you work so far away. That's right. Percy! Percy. What? What's the matter? Have I done something wrong? No. If there's someone else, why don't you tell me? You said there was someone else. There is, though, isn't there? Well, you know best. Uh oh Look, you can't do that. Why not? Well, someone will see. That's all you care about. Well, no, it's not, only I, I don't like it when you cry. Uh oh Shut up. Uh, I've got to get back. Look, uh, how about us going to the pictures together, eh? There's a good one on at the Astoria. Tonight? Well, I don't know about tonight. You see, uh, what we've been Christmas Eve, I did promise I'd spend it with my mother. Sure, it's your mother. Of course. Maybe Saturday night I'll drop in for you. Promise? Sure. I'll be seeing you. So long. Bye. I'm not late, am I? No, it's all right, Boone. Lockup's just here. Uh-huh. What sort of job is it? Oh, it won't take you long. You do it over Christmas? Come on, there we go. Just a minute. Oh, that's that's one and a half litre, eh? Nice job. Yeah. Well, it looks all right. What do you want to do, Mr. Rufus? I want it sprayed black. There's a, there's a tiny scratch. My customer don't like Cambridge blue. Why not? Went to Oxford. <laughs> oh. Anything else? Yes, change the headlamps. I'll give you a new pair of fix. I see. And uh, get rid of the mascot. My customer's a married man. All right? No, I don't touch hot jobs. Hot? Stolen, pinched. I've been around. Well, I never. You'll have to try somewhere else. And 50 quid in it for you, 25 now, 25 when you're finished. Um, you come to the wrong address. 50 quid? I'll throw the rug in. Keep the feet warm. Everybody here, Verita? Yes, Mr. Battlebury. Very well. Bring in the prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> John, sir? During my illness, I won't remember. I won't remember. I've forgotten it. Bravo, John, sir. In harness to the last day. Eh? Take those letters, somebody. <laughs> Well, now, let's see. How long is it you've been with us, Josser? Four. I'll tell you, 42 years. Right? Yes. 42 years is a long time. Yes, a long time. And now our old friend is going to get the rest he deserves. No more running for that early bus, eh, Josser? <laughs> no. I almost envy you. But the rest of us must put in a few more years yet before we can retire. Isn't that so, Miss Sweeting? Definitely. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have no intention of letting our old friend go without a little presentation. First, 
my own modest contribution. Thank you. And here is the very handsome timepiece for which your friends have subscribed. Every time you look at it, you can just sit back and remember that the rest of your time's your own. Good luck and a very happy Christmas. Speech! Speech! Mr. Battleberry. Sir. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Still going. Oh. And when you look at it, just remember the rest of the time's your own. That's what he said, Mother. Won't be much left to look at if you keep on dropping it. Well, it's still going. Nice tickets got. Listen. I can hear it where I am. Funny to think I shall never be going back there anymore. Well, first thing in the morning, I'll start writing round. We're nearly five hundred pound now. We ought to be able to get something really nice. I can't help thinking it's hard on Doris. There's her fares. Well, there's plenty of other girls have to travel up and down. Besides, we wouldn't have to pay rent if we bought a cottage. It was all right when we were only talking about it. Huh. Well, there's no harm in writing, is there? Perhaps they won't have anything. They're sure to have something if we don't want it. Oh, nearly forgot. Mr. Battleberry gave me something, too. Twenty-five pound, for him, personally. He can afford it. Oh, generous, I call it. Well, I don't. Here you've been slaving year in and year out. And now... But I've got my pension. Two pound a week for doing nothing. Well, I... My mother. What's up? It's nothing. It's only after all these years. Oh. No! What? <laughs> Never seen you like this before. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you to get it mended on Monday. Single room, gas ring, part use bath. Yes. Yes. It's very late. It is always later than we think. B would you like to see it? Thank you. It's downstairs. Naturally. This is the room. Of course, it, it looks more cheerful in the daylight. Thank you, thank you very much. You mean you like it? It is, as you say, a room. You know the rent? Fifteen shillings a week, I think it said. In advance? Quite so. When would you intend to come? What? Oh, I've come. This will cover two weeks. I... Are you connected with the stage? No, quite unconnected. Oh, your name. I didn't quite catch your name. Naturally. I didn't mention it. It is Squales, Henry Squales. S-Q-U-A-L. Thank you. Percy, 
Is that you? Percy? Yes, Mum. Thomas, say good night. Okay. I didn't want to wake you, Mum. Oh, you didn't. I've been to midnight mass at St. Joseph's. I hoped you'd get back in time. Well, you know, um, job came in at the last minute and... <laughs> good night, Mum. Well, Merry Christmas, you mean. Now, you close your eyes and hold out your hand. I've got a surprise for you. There. By rights, it should wait till breakfast, but never mind. Oh, Mum. It's already filled. Mum, it, it's just what I wanted. I've been saving up. Oh, you shouldn't have. Of course, I, I've been hard at it oh, all day. Oh, I didn't expect anything, dear. You're much too busy. Well, I didn't say I hadn't got anything, did I? You just wait there and leave it all to purse. Turn your head away. There. Percy. <laughs> like it? Oh, Percy. Keep your feet warm. It's lovely. You're such a good boy. Nobody ever had a better son. Oh, no, no, Mum. It's only what you deserve. Oh. <laughs> He's Uncle Henry, Mother. Uncle Henry? What, already? Yes. What has he been up to this time? He'll be up in the soapbox in Hyde Park next. Take him out for a bit, Fred. I want to get this turkey ready before he talks the hind leg off it. All right, Mother. And do make him bring that bike indoors, Dad. He can't leave it outside like that. It's quick. Carrie's busy getting dinner. She wants me to take you for a walk. What do you think I am, a tame poodle? No, Henry, it's just... I've cycled all the way from Fulham, thank you very much. Wouldn't you like to bring your bike inside? Anything wrong with it? Well, it's not very Christmassy, is it? Would you describe the international situation as Christmassy? No. Perhaps you'd like to deck it up with a sprig of mistletoe. It'd be more seasonable, wouldn't it? That's the trouble with this country. There's Hitler arming to the teeth, holding a dagger to our very vitals, and what is our reply? Hey, ho, the holly, this life is so jolly. Oh, I do beg your pardon, I'm sure. But I don't seem to have a shilling for the meter and the gas. It's run out. <laughs> oh, we can't have that, can we? No, we can't, can we? <laughs> there you are, Connie. Oh, thanks awfully. I'll pay you back in the morning. Yes, do. <laughs> well, I mustn't butt in on your old-fashioned Christmas, must I? Turkey and everything. <laughs> no, I mustn't. Well, thanks awfully. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Connie. Oh. 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 Oh.
glass of water, Doris, quick. Cheer, Henry. I thought she looked a bit pale. You want to get her head lowered in the feet? Go away, Henry. Don't, don't, don't fuss about it. Don't fuss about it. Take a sip of this, Connie. Oh, no, 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 really. I'm quite all right. Are you feeling better? Yeah, I think I am. I'm sure I am. Came over faint. Can't think why. It isn't as though it's the first time I've skipped a meal. What? You mean you've nothing to eat? Uh, oh, well, I'm slimming anyway. Good gracious, you must have a bite of something. Uh, how about a slice of turkey, Mother? Oh, no, no, no. That would be sponging. Connie hasn't come to that yet. Lay another place, Doris. And another thing. I ask you, why wasn't Russia invited to Munich? Ah, oh, wasn't she? Wasn't she? Russia wasn't asked because she wasn't wanted. Wasn't she? If we don't wake up soon, if the rest of Europe doesn't wake up, then Hitler's got us like this. Oh, Henry, for goodness sake, put on your paper hat and enter into the spirit. Go on, bury your head in the sand. Fiddle while Rome burns. That's right. On with the motley and after you with the nutcrackers. Oh, I, uh, I thought you'd all have finished. That's all right, we have. Well, I, I just dropped down to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, Percy. Don't go, Percy. Come and have a glass of port wine. Thank you, Mr. Josser. All right, sit over here. That glass, Doris. Merry Christmas, Doris. Thank you, Percy. You know Percy, Henry. I do. There you are, my boy. Dig that up. <laughs> what you got there, Percy? Well, it, it, it's a sort of Christmas present. I, I thought Doris might like it. Oh. Yeah. For me? Well, I thought you might like it. Oh, but... Well, Percy... go on, open it. Oh, you shouldn't, really. Well... Now, isn't that nice, eh? Doris can't possibly accept it. Why not? Because you've no call to go giving her presents. Mother! Thank you, Percy. It's very kind of you. Well, I thought you might like it. Aren't they sweet? What? We had ever such a sweet engaged couple of the Moonrakers the other night. We never even left the dance floor. Just cheek to cheek from twelve to dawn. Shameless, I call it. I must say, I can't see anything very awful in dancing half the night. If you happen to feel like it. That's not all that goes on, my girl. I suppose you've got influence at the Moonrakers, Connie. I mean, you could get anyone in. Well, what do you think? How about dropping in Saturday night, Doris, eh? What do you mean? You and me. Connie will get us in. What? That's one thing I'm not having, Percy Boone. Doris is not going there. Oh, really, Mother? It's no place for a young girl. Think of the expense. Talk about daylight robbery. Well, I don't mind spending a bit. Oh, no, on second thoughts, I really can't recommend it. But Connie just now is... Oh, look at the time. I, I, I must be going. I wonder would you mind if I was to take just the teeniest bit of cake for my little birdie, Dukey? No. No. Thanks ever so. Bye-bye, <laughs> all. It's been ever so lovely. Percy, where's your mother? Upstairs, Mrs. Chaucer. Don't you think she'd be lonely, sitting up there all by herself? Oh, you mean ask her down? Oh, yes, thanks. I'm sure she'd love to. Yes. I'll, I'll be back in a couple of shakes. Well, if that boy isn't the absolute limit. First you jump on him for giving me a present, then you have to go and fly in his face just because he wants to take me out. I've no time for that young man. Neither have I come to that. But I don't see why I shouldn't be allowed to say no for myself. How was I to know you'd say no? I've the right to say yes if I like, supposing I had wanted to go. You just said you didn't. It's not the point. And what is the point? There's no point. If I feel like going, I'll go. That's the point. But you don't. And she's not. Oh, yes, I am. My time's my own, and I earn my own living. And I will not be contradicted and made to look silly in front of people as if I was a child. So when Percy Bolton comes back, you can tell him I'll be delighted to accept his kind invitation. <laughs> delighted! I don't know what the young ones are coming to. I don't, really. What can you expect? They're a doomed generation. Born doomed. I wish you'd shut your mouth. Mm, what have I done now? It's all your fault. Croak, croak, croak. Upsetting everybody and spoiling everything. Oh, no, Fred, I ask you. Oh, for your... goodness sake, shut up. Oh, you think I can take a hint? Henry, don't go. Good day. Henry. Ostriches. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Christmas comes but once a year. Good evening, Mrs. Lizard. Good evening. Nearly everyone's here. Oh, splendid. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, Hello, Mrs. Oh, Lizard. I'm so glad you were able to get along. Our medium is just preparing himself. Such a very vibrant personality. Lobster paste or sandwich spread? Sandwich spread, please, Mr. Chinkwell. Who have you got for us tonight, Chinkwell? Professor Quilito, Mrs. Yan Beale. Never heard of him. Brighton Psychics gave me a glowing report. He materialized a pseudopod in a matter of minutes, just off Brunswick Square. Uh, lobster paste, Miss Bowker. The last fellow was an utter washout. Oh, well, we must expect our ups and downs, you know. Let's hope this is going to be one of the ups. I'm so hoping for a message from my dear husband. He's been silent since 1935. Everybody, please. As we all seem to be here now, we might uh, take our places, don't you think? Quilito prefers a subdued illumination. I'll notify him that we're ready. If this is lobster paste, I'm the Flying Dutchman. Snow cold. <sighs> what were you on earth, Payem? A llama. My earthly name meant water stillness, but now they call me blackly shining. They? I thought you said you were alone. I am alone. Then who is there to call you brightly shining? Or anything else for that matter? The birds. And the flowers. Flowers. Up there among all that snow. Snow flowers. Have you any message for us, Payam? There is one here who is unhappy. She is like an empty bottle containing no wine. For she's a widow. She is like a harp that the wind plays upon. The music is faint and far off, but somewhere there are ears which hear it. Somewhere there is a strong arm waiting to support her. Somewhere. Somewhere. Is that all, Payem? over. For what it was worth. What about putting on the light? Oh, very well. Mr. Squint. Yes? Mrs. Vizard, I did not know that you too were a fellow seeker, or I would have disclosed myself before. You didn't know I was to be at the seance? Of course not. How could I? Why? I... I was thinking of what you said there. Oh, 
I am never aware of what passes in a trance state. After all, it is not I who speak. No. No, of course it wouldn't be. I greatly fear that I was not at my best. No doubt I disappointed. No, please don't think that. Oh, I'm glad. So glad. And if, unknown to me, I was able to help you in any way, then that indeed would be its own reward. Good night. <laughs> Uh, Moonrakers Club, Soho, please. That's it. That's right, Chum. What's the damage? Four and six on the clock. Keep the change. Thank you, sir. I suppose this is it. it must be, the Moonrakers. Mind you, you can't tell from the outside. Shut me down! You are not causing nobody to finish. I'm not saying something to tell you. I'm not causing. No, 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 no. You're not causing. Mr. Mayor, you remember, Sonny? Oh, it's all right. We're friends of Miss Cokes. Is you? Coke. Connie Cokes. She's an hostess here. Connie? Oh, Connie! Hostess, eh? That's a good one. Well, she works here, doesn't she? Yeah, you bet she does. Hey, Connie, here's some friends of yours. Well, good gracious. What a small world it is, to be sure. And tonight of all nights, with the girl who does the cloaks down with lumbago. Oh, come off it, Connie. Connie, you said you'd get us in. Oh, they charge you the earth just to breathe here, don't they? How much? <clears throat> Give us your coats. I'll sign you in. Twenty-five bob each. Percy. That's all right, Doris. Keep the change, Sonny. See you later, Connie. It's filled up a bit, hasn't it? It has. Mind you, I can't do myself justice here. When you come down the pally, I'll take you right through my routine. Nice band, though. I don't have the strict tempo stuff myself. There's nothing like the strict tempo stuff. Enjoying yourself? Mm. What time is it, Percy? Oh, don't worry about that. The night's only just started. This is great. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll well, have guys like that thrown off the floor at the pally. Mind if I ask the band to play a number specially for us? No, of course not. Shan't be a minute. Excuse me. Could I have a word with you? I don't think I know you. Are you leaving soon? No. When I do, it'll be with my partner. I think you ought to leave. Oh, well, why? Well, it's the first time you've been to a place like this, isn't it? Has that anything to do with you? I mean, you're not the usual type that comes here. I'm sorry, I can't return the compliment. You're not going to go? No, of course I'm not. What do you take me for? Please go away. Thought you wouldn't. I'm sorry. What's he after? Trying to get off? I don't know. Well, I'll sort him out. No, Percy. It's not worth it. Let's dance. Oh, OK. They are. They're playing it. My favourite number. Little Girl Blue. Little girl in blue Passing by Ask them to play it, Doris. Well, it reminds me of you. We don't get anywhere. You on your side, me on mine. We could walk a bit, talk a bit after a little bit. Down. 
but each day words I want to say fade away when Feed it, coppers! Please stay where you are, everybody. No one's to leave. Oh, dear. Let's get out of here. Hansi, I can't cut my head back. But it's the police. I left it on the table. Well, all right, well, you stay here. I'll get it. You bloody young. Well, what do you think I'm doing? This way, I'll show you. Well, why this way? Look, Doris is over there. I, I can't leave without her. Leave her to me. I'll take you up the staircase. But Doris, Don't I can't leave Doris. I'll fetch her. I tried to tip you off, but you wouldn't listen. You don't deserve it, but I'll do my best. Come on, please get downstairs. Do as you can. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Ah, there you are. All right. Is this what you call doing your best? I'm dealing with you right away. I think it was absolutely mean of you picking tonight. I didn't pick it. I'm not on the selection committee. Why couldn't you have told me you were a policeman? Name and address. Doris Josser, 10 Dulcimer Street, SE11. Any telephone number? Might need it. City 0501. That's the office. 0501. Why are you writing the telephone number in a different place? For easy reference. Doris. Well? Well, Connie said you'd fetch her, and then before I knew where I was, I found myself outside. I'm, I'm sorry. Even if you did lose your nerve, don't you think you might have followed on to the police station and told them you were with me? Well, I never thought of that. No, you wouldn't. Done the whole job, Percy? Yeah. Quick work. Mm-mm. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Do you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't have a streak of the artist in you. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, don't be ashamed of it, boy. Don't be ashamed of it. Much obliged. Oh, Tom. I'll let you know when something else blows in. Thanks. Here, Jack, there's only a fiver here. Yes, it's the best I can do. But you said another 25. Am I to blame for the international situation? The income tax going up and the bottom dropping out of the big car market? But it hasn't dropped out since last week. As far as you're concerned, it has. Here, yeah, wait a minute. I've got to look after the boys who take the real risks. Well, I'm not going to stand for it. Aren't you? What are you going to do, Percy? Well, I... I've a good mind to do the old job myself next time. What, you? <laughs> What's so funny about that? It takes nerve, Percy, plenty of it. Now, you're a nice lad. Take a tip from me. Stay in your depth. <laughs> How does he know I haven't a nerve? Change his tune if he opened a garage door one fine morning and found another car parked there. Come from nowhere. I'd like to see his face. I could, too. He never took back that key. Milk and sugar, Mr. Squares? Both of me. Two lumps, please. I like it very sweet and rather milky. Thank you. How very delightful of you to invite me, Mrs. Vizard. And what a charming room. Have you lived long in this house, Mrs. Vizard? I came here as a bride. So? And then, is it long ago since Mr. Vizard died? Passed over? 1922, Michaelmas Quarter Day. And since then, you have been a solitary. I've been quite content. The departed left me provided for. Ah, even a material consolation is something, however small. He left me very comfortable. Good. It is a very pleasant thing to be free from anxiety. Uh, 
But loneliness can be a terrible thing, as I know only too well. Yes. How very strange. I see now how wrong I was. Do you know that when I first met you, I took you to be a much older person? I took you to be almost middle-aged. Oh. <laughs> it's always as well to be on the safe side. I see it's many years since I've been to the moving pictures. But even the most unworldly of us must unbend from... Yes, yes, time it's time. Good evening, Mrs. Vizard. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, after the flakes? Oh, it crossed our minds. You're not thinking of going to the Carlton, are you? Oh, the Astoria. Oh, that's right. That's the best program. Good night. Good night. Nosy little devil. What? Oh, I was only reflecting that he has all the curiosity of youth. <laughs> May I? a log. Ought to clear 150 quid on this. How's that for an estate, Doris? Once I got you, I'd be okay. I'd get my own garage on the level. I'd do repairs and reboring. I... <laughs> I was leaving Funland. Thought I'd give you a nice surprise. You come out of there. Lovely picture you took me to the other night, I must say. I haven't enjoyed myself so much for years. Look, man, I've got Fine fool, I felt sitting there waiting like a dummy. But... I believe you clean forgot. Look, I've got to put this car away, you see. You're going to give me a lift home. 
I can't. It, it's a customer's car. I'm doing a private job on it. It wouldn't be the first time. Look, it's too far. Do come on out, man. It's only just across the common. Come on out! Where are you going? I don't want to think you pinched it. Shut up. See, we're nearly there. You can come up for a drink if you like, like you used to. I've got to get back. So you keep saying. It's about all you have said. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I suppose you took her out instead the other night. Who? You know. Why don't you choose someone your own type? Me, for instance. I wouldn't give you the run round. Here, look out. You go easy. You got me in the car, remember? I'm okay. What's that? It's a policeman. He's signalling. Hey, Percy, he's holding you up. They're not going to get me. Oh, go crazy. There's been an accident. Accident? Well, what do you think you're doing? For goodness sake, stop. Well, I can't not now. Hey, let me out of here. I don't like this. Let me out. You would get in. Now you've got to stay in. Let me out. Stop the car. Stop it. Oh, shut up. Yeah, don't be a fool. Let me go. Stop it. Stop it. Sit stop still. It, stop it. Sit still. Stop it. Stop it. You asked for it. You can't say you didn't ask for it. I didn't mean to do it, Mum. Allow me. Oh, thanks. Not at all. Good night. No. Yes. Done him. Knocked over the head and thrown out of a car. Well, the gun, the cash desk, you mean? Yes, you know, Myrna. Did they get the fella? Who said it was a fella? Well, it wouldn't be a woman, would it? Of course not. The cops reckon whoever it was must have picked her up when she came out of the underground by the comet. Well, it might be anyone, then. That's just it. Might be anyone. 
Big Bill Fan on Cummins for show. Standard. Please search for Car Bandit. Read all about it. <clears throat> you got the um, racing result, please. All there. It's a national disgrace, that's what it is. A crying scandal. Right. Evening, Mr. Knocker. It's a Giving all that music. space to a tuppenny havenny piece of minor thuggery with you upon the brink. How are you, young boon? Good evening. I'm fine, thanks, Mr. Knocker. Doping the masses, I see. What? Pap for the multitude, eh? Evening news. All over the front page, of course. No sense of proportion. It makes me speechless, Boone. That's what it makes me speechless. Yes. What do you think of the international situation? Well, I, I don't know much about it. Uh, he don't know much about it. He don't know much about it. The police are anxious to interview a man who they, be who, who they believe will be able to help them in their inquiries. Aged about 45, last seen when... Henry Squales, have you sunk so low as to do this thing? There can only be one answer. Yes, you have. Who is it? A friend. May I come in? Yes, certainly. I... I have come to say goodbye. You don't mean you're leaving here. You see before you one who is... destitute. During the past month, I have pawned everything I possess. Does that matter? To a gentleman, it is the only thing that matters. Not to be a burden. That is why I must say goodbye. But, Henry... You'll find your rent in the mantelpiece. Sixpence short. All I could get for my propelling pencil. Don't go away. You mean you need me? It at all. It isn't even mentioned. They've drawn a blank, that's what it is. A couple of months now. You're okay, Percy boy. You're okay. Oh, thanks. Save me the trouble of knocking. Oh, yes? You're Percy Boone, aren't you? That's me. What do you want? I've heard all about you. You have? Don't you remember me? Policeman who blew the whistle at the Moonrakers. You want me? <laughs> Not just now, Percy. I'm off duty. of you to call. Yes. Yes. Take a seat, Mr. Tots. Oh, thanks, Mr. Josser. Nice flowers, aren't they, Mother? Yes. I just put them in water. Yeah. Um, did Do you sit down, Fred? Oh. Won't be long before summer's here, eh, Mrs. Josser? No. We're a bit cramped here. We're, we're going to move when we can find a place further out. If we ever do find one. Busy? Yes, I... Fancy asking a policeman a question like that. Only thought he might be. With you. Oh. 
<laughs> I'll take and get it mended on Monday. <laughs> That's what you're always saying, Dad. His firm gave it to him when he retired. Like to see the inscription? Yes, I would, Mr. Josser. You'd better come and help with the supper, Fred. Oh, all right, Mother. You show it to him, Doris. I don't know why you had to sit there without saying a word. Well, I like that, Mother. Every Fred. time I open... What do you think of us? I don't know, I'm sure. I wish you wouldn't go getting yourself in such a state. Get the door, Liz. Funny if we find ourselves as a policeman in the family. It doesn't seem quite respectable. Hmm. I hope we've got enough ham and town. Well, you might have said something instead of just sitting there like that. Well, I couldn't think of anything to say. Don't think your mother likes me much. That's just her way with strangers. Do you think there's any chance once she gets more used to me? I hope so. Well, how about tomorrow night, then? I've seen you three times this week already. Yes, but... If you don't mind. Where did you get this? Percy Boone gave it to me for Christmas. It's rather nice, isn't it? Yeah. A car mascot, isn't it? Mm, might be. Percy works in a garage. Oh, where? Give us Andrew the table, Doris. All right, Dad. You know, ropers on the Streatham Road. <laughs> It's the figure of a dancing girl with fans, sir. Maker's name Lejeune and number stamped on base. Todd thought he recognized it, and sure enough, he found it in the December list. Belonged to a stolen SS, one and a half liter. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, go on, Todd. Well, I thought since I knew Boon slightly, I might have a word with him. Ask him how he got hold of it. So I called in on my way this morning at the garage where he works. I saw Boon there. I was just going to talk to him. Then I found that Funland was just opposite, sir. The Funland in Mercer Street, where Myrna Watson used to work. Myrna Watson? Yes, sir. Maybe a coincidence. A stolen car in each case, sir. Yes. Well, this opens up a new line with a vengeance. Thank you, Dobbs. Uh, you'd better lend him to us. We'll need him inside the house. Is that absolutely necessary, sir? I gather you have access to 10 Dulcimer Street. A uh, bit involved there, sir. Involved? Wonderful. Couldn't ask anything better. So long as you keep your mouth closed. Yes, sir. Can you spare a minute? You want something? We're just checking up on things. From head office? No, police. You got your cards? Okay. Ever go to the fun fair? Which one? Funland, the nearest one. Oh, Funland. Yeah, sure, I've been over to Funland. Not lately, though. Stop going? Well, I never went much. Recognize her? Hmm, pity. You can't help us then. Can't I? What do you want to know? Who killed her? Cigarette? No, thanks. Who is she? Cashier over there, name of Watson. She's been murdered? Don't you read the papers? Yes, I, I did see it. I remember now. It was all there. Why, well, I, I wasn't all that interested. Except she came after you stopped going. That's right, she came after I stopped going. How do you know she came if you'd stopped going? Well, well, she must have done or I'd have known. Ever write her any letters? I never wrote her a line. How could he? Didn't even know her, did he? No, of course not. Sorry, chum, my mistake. Just routine, you understand? Yeah, sure. I hope you get him. Don't worry, we will. Well, I'm just off to Benediction. I shan't be late back. Ta-ta. Okay.
Someone at the door. Shall I go and answer it for you, my dear? No. Your supper will get cold. Bless you. Oh. Good evening, Mrs. Vizard. Well, Mr. Chinkwell, this is a surprise. Come in. I'm afraid I've called on a somewhat delicate matter. Would you like to come downstairs? No, no, I think not. I, um, I understand Professor Colito is staying here. You mean Mr. Squales? What has he to do with it? He has everything to do with it, I fear. You may recall Mrs. Jan Beale had doubts concerning him. That woman has doubts about everything. She communicated her doubt to the Brighton Circle. As a result, they examined certain spirit photographs obtained under Mr. Squales' supervision. She had absolutely no right. I won't listen. Mrs. Vizard, those photographs were faked. What? The features of a figure which he claimed to be an astral projection of the first Lord Birkenhead have turned out to be those of a well-known professional footballer. Suitably touched up, of course. I don't believe it. How I wish I could turn a blind eye to it myself. But we must face the fact that we have been the dupes of a charlatan, Mrs. Vizard, a common adventurer. Yes. Oh, Kitty, I've been thinking, why shouldn't we make our little announcement tomorrow, hmm? After all, we might have a little celebration. Nothing elaborate, claret cup, prawns and aspic, chipolata sausages on sticks. What do you say, Kitty? Get out of here. And get out of this house. Eh? Hey? You heard what I said. Are you feeling quite well, Kitty? I'm giving you notice. But Kitty, what on earth's come over? The truth. That's what's come over me. I've no use for, for fakes and common adventurers. Who's been talking? One word should be enough for you. Brighton. Brighton? I see you know what it means. If there is one spot in this world where my enemies are congregated more thickly than anywhere else, that spot is Brighton. I'm not interested in any excuses or explanations. I've never been so humiliated in my life. Oh, Kitty, you can talk like this to me. You must be gone by the morning. I shall be gone within the hour. You leave me no choice. Hello. Bill, I thought you were on duty. They switched the rotor. Why didn't you telephone me at the office? Uh, I didn't have time. It's too bad of you. You might have let me know. Well, aren't you pleased to see me? Don't be an idiot, Bill. It's just that everything's in such a mess. You would have to come when I'm right in the middle of the ironing and look at me. My hair's simply awful. Nobody at home. No, Dad's taken him out of the country to look for a cottage. They're not back yet. I simply must go and put something on. I look an absolute fright. Sit down and read the paper or something, Bill. I shan't be long. All right. Doris? Yes? Could I use the telephone for a minute while I'm waiting? Well, there isn't one in the house, but you can phone from the tobacconist around the corner. Thanks.
Yes, Sergeant. Know what to do? Yes, Sergeant. Make it snappy. Right. Percy Boone. Mr. Squires! Mrs. Squires, what's the matter? What is this? Please, not now. I think he must have eaten something. Shall I run and fetch Mr. Little from the chemist? If he thinks he'll get anywhere by pretending... Take care. Take care. The shadow over this house. Be warned. Here. This is more in your line than mine. If you think... The shadow of a hand. The hand of the law. I see it closing on this house. The mark of Cain. Murder most foul. Shades of the prison house are closing round the growing boy. What's he mean? Be warned. Mr. Squales, Mr. Squales, listen. Can't you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Where am I? Number ten. What? But I, I was leaving. That's what I thought. I must have been overcome with sleep. I've no idea what you think you're up to, but you can't deceive me any longer. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I'm tired. Bed's the place for you after a do like that. So very, very tired. You must be out of here by tomorrow morning at the latest. Well, I wouldn't have missed that for anything. It's better than the pictures. Good morning, Dad. Any news? Yes, it gets worse and worse. This is from the estate agent's mother about that cottage we saw yesterday. What do they say now? Well, if you like to make a firm offer of 500 pounds, they might take it. I thought they'd climb down. How's that, Doris? Well, it sounds <laughs> lovely, but isn't it a bit far out? Oh, I don't know. Besides, you may not be travelling up and down much longer. Hey, Mother? <laughs> Hello. What's that? It's the police. Come outside, Boone. We want to talk to you. I'm sorry. You're Percy Boone? Yes, sir. I have a warrant for your arrest in connection with the death of Myrna Watson on the 30th of January last. I must ask you to come to the police station with us, where you'll be formally charged. Oh, really? Willful murder. I must warn you that anything you say will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. I've never done it. Come along. Percy. Percy. Oh, 
Give us a hand, Constable. Yes, She's sir. fainted. That's right. Let's get her to her room. The disgrace of it. It'll be in all the papers. The curse. He's such a kid. I'll never live it down, never. I've always done my best to keep this house respectable. And now I shall never... he said. Who? Him. It's all happened just as he said it would. Oh, yes. Oh. Don't go. I beg your pardon? Please come back. If you're thinking of the rent, it is back in the mantelpiece. Henry, you were right. It's happened. Percy Boone's been arrested. Uh, what for? Murder. Just like you told us last night. I? Don't you remember? Of course, I have my unconscious moments of revelation, but I doubt whether they are acknowledged in Brighton. I know I was wrong. If you go, I'll never forgive myself. Poor, weak little kitty. You will stay? I am willing to discuss the possibility. Did you have any breakfast? No thought of food has entered my mind. Would you like something? We'll discuss that, too. Ah, just a minute. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you mm. some questions. I won't say a word against Percy. We have to take a statement from everybody. Well, why don't you start with him, Mr. Squales? He saw it all before it happened. Well, what do you mean? He told us Percy was going to be arrested. I heard it myself. He's psychic, you know. Just exactly what did he say? Well... You will have something to eat, won't you? I've got some nice sausages. Kitty, Kitty, you don't seem to realize. I've had a sleepless night and my, my sensibilities have been deeply shocked. I'm so sorry. If you'd rather not have anything... No, 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 Kitty. Anything you say, anything you say. Yes? Mr. Squales? Yes? I wonder, could we have a word with her? It's in connection with Percy Boone. But I, I don't see how I can help you in any way. It won't take a minute. Very well, then. Now, Mr. Squales, uh, perhaps we'd better go into my room. Thank you. Oh. Is this likely to go any further? That's not for me to say. What happened, Henry? What did they want? Uh, advice. Just advice. I told them that my gifts were not for sale. Just a minute, Doris. I'm sorry all this has happened. Sorry? Why? You'll get your promotion, won't you? you? Don't think I was doing it because of that, do you? How do you think I'm going to face poor Mrs. Boone now? And Dad and the others? Well, I couldn't help it, Doris. I was only doing my job. No use saying anything. I never feel I can trust you again. And I don't believe Percy did it anyway. There you are, Doris. I've done it all for you. Of course you did, Pers. <laughs> A thousand in cash, please. Certainly, sir. Anything else you'd like?
Percy Boone, you are charged with willful murder. I've never done it. 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 It's only a dream. When I wake up, I'll be okay. It's a, it's only a dream. Mr. Josser, Mr. Box. Morning. Can't Morning. spend much time. <coughs> what is it? You're the solicitor that's looking after Percy Boone. <laughs> that's right. Your relative? No, sir. <coughs> Witness? Uh, no, his mother sent me along to make sure... Tell her everything's being done. That all. I'm a very busy man. <coughs> oh, I've come along to help. She's got 200 pounds to put up for the defense. Oh, I see. Uh, take a seat. Well? We want Percy to be defended by the best man you can get. We thought of Patrick Hastings, but if well, you... 200 pounds is no good. Wrong sort of sum. Wouldn't attract a case here at all. <coughs> oh. How much would you need? Much as you can get. Would, uh, would 300 be any good? Better than 200. 100 pounds better. 400 better still. Can you do it? No. Uh, well, I'm not Find sure. Find out how I you stand. Call I... again. I'm a very busy man. You're late. Your supper's in the kitchen. Oh, thank you, Mother. I promised I'd pop round and see Mrs. Boone. Oh. Oh, by the way, that man from the estate agent came round. You never wrote that letter, Fred. Well, I forgot it, what with all this. Well, you better do it right away or we'll lose that cottage. I left the pen and paper out for you. Oh, thank you, Mother. better still. Can you do it? <laughs> I've had a talk with Mr. Josser. I've briefed V.C. Blaze for you. V.C. Blaze, you know. You've heard of V.C. Blaze, haven't you? Very big man. Expensive. Very. What's he gonna do? To do? He's going to defend you. That's what he's going to do. You mean you're chucking it up? Chucking it. I'm instructing him. Oh. Oh, OK, I'll get you. He may want to talk to you himself. <coughs> Is he the judge? The... You'll find out soon enough. Try and get your mind clear for him, will you? Try. It's all. They said I could give you this, Percy. It's from your mother. Why did the nurse write the letter for the last time, Mr. Josser? Well, I told you she'd got to rest. It's not her hands, is it? No, Percy. No, she's just lying down, resting. Well, goodbye, my boy. Keep your chin up. Goodbye, Mr. Josser. Thanks for coming. That's all right. This is a pretty stupendous kettle of fish. Can't say it's not a grim prospect now. You mean about Percy Boone? Percy Boone? Ah, what's he got to do with it? Don't you listen to the radio? Hitler's demands on Poland, pandemonium in Danzig. You know what that means? Do you know, Carrie? Armageddon. That's right. Give him a tea cloth, Fred. You won't laugh when the sky over London's black with chickens coming home to roost. Twin engine chickens laying high explosive eggs. Just as well we're moving outside, eh, Fred? Uh, yes, Mother. You did send that letter, didn't you? No, Mother. Fred, you don't mean you never wrote it? No. Why not? Does this matter? I spent some of the money. You did what? I spent it on Percy's defence. I had to do it, Mother. 
He's got Percy Boone on the brain. How much? 200 pounds. 200 pounds? You must be mad. He is mad. The boy's nothing to us at all. After all these years looking for a cottage, now we'll never have one. Well, not long ago you weren't so keen on it yourself, Mother. It's what I've always wanted. And now, because you get some sloppy idea into your head, you go and... You go straight to them and ask for your money back. I can't do that now, Mother. <laughs> Well, you asked for that, Fred, I must say. You're a lot of help, you are. Well, naturally, I'm the sort of man that takes a large view. So when I see a little chap like you playing a Don Quixote while a sick world all round him's tottering to its collapse, well... Uh... Supposing the world is sick. Isn't that poor lad part of it? My dear The world's Fred. human beings, not a lot of stuff out of books. If I want to give help in hand, I'll give help in hand. It isn't a question. Oh, you go shoot your mouth off in Hyde Park. I pity you, Fred. From the bottom of my heart. I pity you. Mr. Henry Swowles? Do I look like him? Mr. Squales! Hello! You, Mr. Squowles? What is it? You're subpoenaed to appear at the Central Criminal Court, Old Bailey, on Monday week as a witness for the Crown in the case of Rex versus Percy Boone. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much. Who was it? Oh, just a telegram for me. Professional engagement. They want me to give them the direct voice at uh, St. Albans on Monday week. Oh, Monday week. Why, that's the day of the trial. Is it? Oh, yes, so it is. Oh, Kitty, I've been thinking. Couldn't we get married sooner? <laughs> it's only three weeks now. If only we could face the sordid publicity of this case already united. You wouldn't reconsider a registry office? Now, you know, I've quite made up my mind about that, Henry. Well, then, promise me that you won't go near the trial. Well, of course, I won't go if it would upset you. Oh, it would. Well, then. You promise? Of course. Oh, Kitty. <laughs> Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. This is for you, Henry. Uh, what is it? An apple, an orange, and a piece of my homemade cake. I thought you might get hungry. Uh, I can easily slip out for a meal. They meant on the train. Oh, yes, of course. The uh, yes, the train. Uh, what time will you be back? Oh, now let me see you. Between half past five or six. All right. Well, goodbye, Henry. There you are, Dad. That ought to keep us going. Thanks, Doris. What do I do with the clothes, please? Oh, thanks, Kelly. Isn't it time you went? I'm not meeting Mr. Barks in line 15. What does he think will happen, Dad? I don't know. It's like that in a law court. You can't tell from one moment to the next. You ever been in one? No. Not if you put it like that, I haven't. Poor Percy. I don't rightly know how I'm going to stand it. Not if anything goes wrong, that is. Would you feel better if I came with you? You know, Mother, I would. Is it make all the difference? Just look at you. Do you think this tie's okay? Oh, I don't know. It's very quiet, these legal gentlemen. Very sober when it comes to dress. Got anything quieter? I think I'd have a better chance with the first. Yes. Hope you're right. Percy Aloysius Boone. <laughs> you 
are charged on indictment that you, on the 30th day of January this year, did kill and murder one Myrna Watson. Percy Aloysius Boone, are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, sir. Prisoner at bar, if you wish to object to any of the names I am about to call to form the jury to try you, you must object as they severally come to the book to be sworn, and before they are sworn, and you will be heard. Will the jury answer their names and come to the box as they're called? George Forbury? Yeah. William George Carter? Yeah. Charles Matthews? Yeah. George Martin Slesser? Yeah. Lillian Marshall Stapleton? Yeah. Elizabeth May Ferguson? Yeah. Ronald Digby James? Yeah. Joan Dorothy Phillips? Yeah. Peter Leonard Catesby? John Stanley... That's VC Blaze down there. Philip Martin. Uh, here. Davis Johns. Yeah. Swear the jury. The evidence will demonstrate that at about the time when the car was missed from the cinema park, Police Constable Lamb was signalling that same car to stop on the common. He will tell you that he had to jump for his life. That before the car disappeared at an estimated speed of 50 miles an hour. In my opinion, the wound in the forehead was caused by a blow administered before she struck the road. In your opinion, could the blow have been delivered with a spanner? Uh, pass uh, Exhibit 5 to the witness, please. It would be consistent with the nature of the injury. Thank you. No questions. Call Detective Sergeant Wilson. Detective Sergeant Wilson. Later, I was present when the canal was dragged and the door handle of a car was discovered directly underneath the bridge. Do you identify exhibit number four as the handle? I do. What did you do then? I tried the handle on the near side front door of the Austin car PQJ1776. And what did you find? It fitted perfectly, sir. Thank you. No questions. <laughs> Henry Squales. Call Henry Squales. Call Henry Squales. Henry Squales. Henry Squales. <coughs> you are Henry Ricardo Squales of 10 Dulcimer Street, South East 11. Yes, I am. What is your occupation? Independent. <laughs> <laughs> Silent in court. Do you recall seeing the prisoner on the night of January the 30th? What? Do you recall seeing the prisoner on the night of the 30th of January? I don't remember. You don't remember? Are you quite sure, Mr. Squills? No. Yes, I mean... I see. Mr. Squales, um, will you look at the statement you made to the police on April the 4th? You remember making that statement in the presence of Detective Sergeant Taylor and Detective Sergeant Dodds? Is that your signature at the foot of it? <laughs> Very well. Now then, Mr. Squales. I believe that from time to time, you give voice to prophecies concerning the future. Prophecies, Mr. Wasson? I use the term for want of a better one, my lord. I understand Mr. Squales to be a, a medium of sorts. Thank you, Mr. Wasson. Now then, uh, on the day before his arrest, you prophesied that the prisoner would be charged with murder, did you not? I am unaware of what passes in the trance state. I quote from your statement. Um, I saw Boone pass through the hall at about 1 a.m. He dropped an object on the floor. I picked it up. It was a car door handle. It was this little incident that enabled you to make such an accurate prophecy. Eh, hey, Mr. Squales? <laughs> well, 
Will? <laughs> I don't like the way the jury's looking at Percy. You wait till old Beasy Blaze gets going. About time he did. We haven't seen much for our 200 pounds yet. <coughs> you wait. Well, I, I was nearly off the road by then. Then, when I straightened up and looked around, the, the door was open and she'd gone. And that, of course, was the defective door. Yes, sir. And you can honestly tell the court that you felt your life to be endangered by her attack upon you. Th that's right, sir. Thank you. <coughs> this uh, spanner, Boone, look at it. You say that Myrna Watson hit you with it. Will you tell the court where she got it? Well, I don't know, sir. She, she must have found it somewhere. You mean it suddenly appeared in her hand? That's right. Like magic? Well, she must have picked it up. Anyway, she hit you with it. You're quite certain of that. Yes, sir, I am. And it cut you? Yes, sir. You know the police surgeon was not able to find any scar. Well, it, it wasn't much of a cut, sir. It wasn't much of a cut. No, sir. It wasn't much of a cut. But in return, and in self-defense, you struck her so forcibly as to send her to her death. Oh, no, sir. I, I never hit her that hard. It, it all happened so quickly. Ah, I see. You gave her a light blow, the door neatly opened, and she fell out accidentally. That's right. And all strictly in self-defense. Well, she went for me. Why? Oh, because she wanted to get out. That's right. At 50 miles an hour. Well, well, she was scared because we were going so fast. And because she was scared of going so fast, she seized a spanner she found conveniently to hand and struck you, the driver, all at 50 miles an hour. <laughs> yes, sir. This is no murderer you see before you, but a youth whom one might almost describe as the victim of circumstance. A devoted son, the only support of his widowed mother, who, since her son's arrest, has been lying helpless, longing for the return of her only prop and stay. That car was stolen deliberately, premeditatedly. When Police Constable Lamb tried to stop him, the prisoner drove on unswervingly at him. And when that poor girl unwittingly became a menace to his plans, he silenced her brutally and thrust her from the car. You have heard the evidence, and I've given my guidance as to the law on these matters. You will now retire to consider your verdict and tell me what you find. Uh, Lord, might I ask, uh, suppose we decide to... Speak up, please, I can't hear you. Suppose we decided that the prisoner killed the girl but didn't mean to. Uh, what verdict do we bring in then? There are occasions when it seems impossible to impart information by word of mouth. Perhaps writing would be better. I don't know. However, I will repeat. To administer a blow in anger in a drawing room may be an act of common assault. A similar blow administered upon a man standing on top of Beachy Head may be murder. In this case, the prisoner has admitted to striking his fellow passenger in a fast-moving car while in the process of committing a felony. As a result, she fell into the road and was killed. You have heard evidence that the door was faulty. You may therefore decide that the succession of events was out of the prisoner's hands. Nevertheless, if you decide that the blow struck within the car set that succession of events in train, then it will be your duty to find the prisoner guilty of murder. If, on the other hand, you regard the jury... Well, Gino, suppose he only meant to stun her. Yes, exactly. If a person commits an act on another person and that person dies as a result of what has been done by that person to the other person, then the first person who started it all is guilty. But only if the first person is standing on beachy head. Well, a moving car's the same thing. Who said so? Don't let's fall out about small things, please. We don't want to stay locked in here forever. Bring up the prisoner.
Members of the jury, are you agreed upon your verdict? We are. Do you find Percy Boone guilty or not guilty of willful murder? Is it over? Now, you've got to keep calm for Percy's sake. They found him guilty. But the jury recommended him to mercy. He never meant to do it, Clarice. We all know that. Was he brave? Very. Percy would be. There's still the appeal. Mr. Box is going to see about that right away. You mustn't give up hope, Clarice. He'll be all right. I know he will. We're all praying for him. Fred, don't you worry. Anything we can do, Fred? Not a thing. It says here there's only ten more days. I know. They wouldn't. Would they, Fred? I don't know, Carrie. We've done our best. Now, who on earth can that be? Henry. I hope not. Not at this time of night. Tell him it's too late. I want to talk to you, Fred. It's urgent. Shh, you wake everyone up. You do this country good to be woken up. It's what it needs. We're in bed, Henry. You can't come in here at this hour. You realize that even now it may be too late to prevent it? Prevent what? A human sacrifice to society. What are you talking about, Henry? Percy Boone. I didn't know you were interested in Percy Boone. You were quite right, Fred. It came to me like a flash at the trial. I saw him for what he is. The symptom of the whole putrid mess we're in today. See what I mean? No. It's class vengeance. If Percy was the scion of a noble family, would he be where he is now? Yes. Ah, we're wasting our time. Our work begins tomorrow morning at dawn. What? We're going to rescue him. Rescue? Oh, yes, uh, yeah, of course, yes. But how do we set about it? In this street, and the next, and the next, until we have the whole of London on our side. You mean start a revolution? Not yet. Not till the hour is ripe and the fruit is falling. We won't overthrow our rulers this time. We'll petition them. Oh, a uh, petition. We'll swamp the Home Secretary with tens of thousands of signatures. Who's going to collect them? Fred? Oh, me? Well, I've got the organizing to do. It's going to be a colossal job. I'll have to bring my truckle bed in here and make this my campaign headquarters. What? Ten days to go. That's all there is. Ten days and every house in London to be visited. Good morning, madam. I wonder if you'd sign a petition on me. I own. never buy from men at the door. Percy Boone petition! Save Percy Boone! Sign the petition! Sign on the dotted line, ducky. Well, more or less. <laughs> the organizer, please. Nearly a thousand altogether. That's more like it. Not bad. Not bad at all. Good day. Ah, you are the organizer. My name is Hedlam Finn. I am the leader of the Junior Guild of Job. Oh, yeah? I have been told of your splendid crusade, and I am with you heart and soul, my friend, heart and soul. Do you know Percy Boone? No, but it's the principle that counts. Quite, quite. Only knew him slightly myself. How many signatures have you got? Nearly a thousand. A thousand? That will never do. I will detail members of my guild to set up centers of outcry at key points. When is your press conference? Press conference? You're just about to arrange it. Good. Call it at once. We must have this story on every breakfast table in the kingdom. 
by tomorrow morning. Look, that's Doris, and that's Connie, and Uncle Henry, and, and that one's Mr. Josser. See, they're working for you, my boy. Yeah. Doris is helping, too. In Stockholm, they think it's war within two weeks. Nice prospect for all of us. Two weeks. Your turn. Mm. How much longer are you going to be? Only 36 hours left and so much still to do. You would insist on making it a scroll? Well, I let you write the preamble in Gothic script, didn't I? That took four hours. If it's one colossal scroll, they'll see at once what they're up against. They'll recognize it as their own winding sheet. Winding sheet is right. We'll have to use a taxi. No, we shall march. Of course. Who's going to carry it? We shall uh, wheel it. Lock in. Who cares? We'll march across Westminster Bridge and past the House of Commons, up the steps of the Home Office, right into the fortress of reaction. I suppose they'd let me know if there was any news. The governor will tell you. Your pickup, son. With. The hair of the dog is always biting us, red tape. Doris. What are you doing here? Can we go somewhere and talk? No. Why not? I'm surprised you dare show your face here today of all days. Besides, I'm busy. Not going with that lot. As a matter of fact, I am. Of course I am. Come, come, aren't you ready yet? What's that? A torch. A what? A torch. A flaming torch at the head of the procession is bound to catch the eye. Head? What about this? And that can come second. And who's going to push it? The Fred isn't going to, not in public. We can all take turns. First one with a bassinet and then the other. Not me with a flaming torch. I'll stick to the bassinet. As you please. Time is slipping through our fingers while we argue. Have you a match? You're not going with them, are you? Yes, I am. What are you doing? I'm coming with you. Are we all ready? Forward! Take my coat. I don't want it. Why didn't you stop it? Didn't have time. You'd better let me carry the petition. Right, leave this behind. Do you want the home office to be closed when we get there? You get on with your torch, I'll manage. Henry! Henry! Henry. Henry. 
Come on, Doris. Come on. Well, this is a pretty kettle of fish. They must have known what they were going to do. They might have told us. Can't we have the inquest to go warm and dry? Never! He said we'd do it, we'll do it! I must say there seems very little point in carrying on. You fizzle out if you want to. We're going on. There's no question of fizzling. Our purpose has been achieved. Not so we delivered this. You do what you like. I wash my hands of the whole affair. Well, that's all very well. What about taxi? Renegade! Mr. Finn, wait for me! Let's park this blasted thing somewhere and get a drink. Five o'clock in the afternoon by Big Ben, August the 31st, 1939. August the 31st, 1939. Will the war last long? Mockingbird, he said, long. How long? Mockingbird, he said, war finish in six months. No, Mother, the way things have turned out, I'm not a bit sorry we never got that cottage. I knew you'd come round to patting yourself on the back in the end. No, I mean, I wouldn't like to leave Dulcimer Street at a time like this. Wouldn't you? No, neither would you. You'd feel out of it anywhere else, Mother, now you know you would. Perhaps I would, perhaps I wouldn't. I'll take it and get it mended on Monday. Stand at the corner of Dulcimer Street, and you can see down the whole length of the terrace. And they certainly are fine houses. Mm -hmm. 